This conference will now be recorded. Okay, sorry for interruption. Right, please uh, carry on. Now, uh, what are maybe the processes uh, which have uh, uh, which uh, had come after eight zero eight six in that uh, processor? The memory is organized in the form of banks. So this eight zero eight six in this eight zero eight six, this one megabyte of memory is organized in two banks. One is uh, odd bank, next one is even bank. So what is the meaning of even bank and odd bank? Even bank consists of memory locations which consists of all the even addresses. Odd bank consists of locations which consists of all the odd addresses. And if you divide uh, one megabyte of memory, the size of each bank is five twelve kilobytes. So even bank and odd bank uh, both are having uh, the size of five twelve. Kilobytes. Uh, there are some sort of signals uh, which are being used by uh, the 8086 processor uh, in order to activate these banks. To activate odd bank, uh, BHE bar signal is being used by the processor. BHE bar. BHE means bus high enable. This is an active low signal. Using this active low uh, control signal, the processor accesses the uh, odd bank. And in order to access the even bank, the processor will make use of uh, the address signal A0. Uh, basically, this 8086 consists of 20 address lines, so A0 to A19. Among these 20 address lines, A0 line is being used in order to uh, activate or handle even bank. So, uh, similarly, uh, this 8086 processor uh, consists of uh, data bus and its size is of 16 bits. And that data bus is also split into two parts in order to uh, access odd bank as well as even bank. To access the even bank, uh, the processor will make use of uh, lower order eight data lines, uh, D0 to D7. That is called as a lower order data bus too. Uh, uh, that set of data lines is also called as lower order data bus. So that's why this even bank is also called as lower bank. Even bank is also called as lower bank. Why? Because each and every uh, location of the even bank is accessed by using lower order data bus. Similarly, to access uh, a location of uh, the odd bank, the processor will make use of the remaining part of the data bus. What is the remaining part of the data bus? Remaining part is uh, D8 to D15. So uh, the bunch of those data lines, D8 to D15, that bunch is called as higher order data bus. So odd uh, bank is uh, accessed by using higher order data bus. That's why this bank is also called as higher bank. So in this memory, what we need to remember is one megabyte of memory is uh, uh, organized in two banks, odd bank and even bank. Even bank consists of all even addresses. Odd bank consists of all odd addresses. And even bank can be accessed by using lower order data bus. And to handle it, uh, A naught signal is used. And to access odd bank, uh, higher order uh, data bus is being used. And in order to activate it, BHE bar signal is used. So this is what we need to remember uh, while interfacing a memory device uh, uh, with 8086 processor. This concept is mostly required whenever we are going to interface uh, the 8086 processor with memory. And uh, one more point is uh, uh, how the IO devices can be interfaced with 8086 processor. In order to interface I.O. devices with 8086 processor, there are two methods. One is called as memory mapped I.O. and next one is called as I.O. mapped I.O. So we'll see this uh, in the third unit. So let us come to, come to the next uh, feature of 8086. So uh, basically 8086 operates in two modes. One is uh, minimum mode and uh, next one is maximum mode. So what this is, uh, why these modes are uh, uh, called so? Uh, because of uh, the type of system uh, in which uh, the 8086 is being operated. Minimum mode is nothing but it is a mode wherein uh, you can observe only one processor in the system. Maximum mode is such a mode uh, uh, is, a, is a mode uh, in which uh, you can observe more number of microprocessors, uh, multiple processor system. We can say that uh, uh, 8086 processor is operated in uh, uh, multi -process, uh, means if a system consists of uh, multiple number of processors, then 8086 processor is operated in maximum mode. If uh, uh, the system consists of uh, 
uh, only single processor then at the time uh, the 8086 processor is operated in minimum mode so for the sing uh, for the small 8086 processor based systems we operate 8086 in minimum mode and for the large sized uh, systems we operate 8086 in maximum mode and in order to uh, in order to uh, switch uh, the processor in between uh, these two modes there is a specific pin, uh, pin which is uh, available to 8086 processor and that pin is mn by mx bar mn by mx bar is a pin which is available to 8086 processor if mn by mx bar is uh, uh, asserted to logic 1 then it operates in minimum mode and if it is asserted to logic 0 then it operates in uh, maximum mode and uh, let us come to the two main features of 8086 processor so these are all the basic features uh, that 8086 processor consists of there are two main features uh, because of which uh, the 8086 processor is considered to be faster than uh, its uh, predecessors like uh, 8085 and uh, uh, all the previous processors so what are these two features these two features are first one is memory segmentation and next one is instruction pipelining so under memory segmentation uh, the one megabyte of memory which uh, the 8086 processor can access that one megabyte of memory is divided into some set of uh, segments so how many segments into which uh, one megabyte of memory is divided actually that depends upon the type of memory segmentation there are two types of memory segmentations one is uh, overlapping memory segmentation next one is non overlapping memory segmentation as their name implies non overlapping memory segmentation means segments are not overlapped with each other that is called as non overlapping memory segmentation so in this non overlapping memory segmentation this one megabyte of memory is divided into 16 segments and each segment consists of a size of 64 kilobytes so totally 16 into 64 kilobytes one megabyte of memory space is there so this is in non overlapping memory segmentation so next one is uh, overlapping memory segmentation uh, before going to the overlapping memory segmentation let me tell you what is the problem with the uh, non overlapping memory segmentation in non overlapping memory segmentation uh, the memory size is getting wasted uh, let us suppose uh, i have a program i wrote a program whose size is of 40 kilobytes so i write a program and then dump that program into the memory so that program will be stored in a particular uh, segment and the size of the segment is 64 kilobytes so the program that i have written is of uh, size 40 kilobytes now when i store the program then 24 kilobytes of memory is getting wasted in order wasted so in order to avoid this wastage we have to go for another kind of segmentation which is called as overlapping memory segmentation in this overlapping memory segmentation wherever you want to uh, conclude the segment you can conclude the segment and the next segment can be started from the next memory location there are few conditions but uh, in the overlapping memory segmentation wherever you want to end the segment you can end the segment and if you want to start the new segment you can start the new segment from the uh, next coming uh, or upcoming memory locations and uh, in this non overlapping memory segment in this overlapping memory segmentation uh, the number of uh, segments into which uh, the one uh, the one megabyte of memory is being divided is uh, more than 60 more than 16 actually that depends upon the requirement and the size of each segment is maximum of 64 kilobytes and it is not uh, standard one so it can be of 30 kilobytes it can be of 40 kilobytes it can be of 50 kilobytes it can be of 64 kilobytes not more than that so these are uh, two types of memory segmentations overlapping and non overlapping so what is the use of memory segmentation there are two uses of memory segmentation so what are the uses because of the memory segmentation in order to access a memory location uh, you need to use 16 bit addresses and uh, these are the addresses which can be stored by the registers available in 8086 processor in 8086 processor all the registers are of size 16 bit not more than that so in order to access a memory location the processor need to have need to have a register to store 20 bit address which is not possible to access a memory location uh, processor needs 20 bit address and to access a location processor need to store that 20 bit address in a 20 bit register 
and this is not possible why because 20 bit register is not available only 16 bit registers are available in 8086 processor but by using the memory segmentation concept this 20 bit address can be divided into 16 bits and using the 16 bit registers you can handle the memory locations okay so this is one and uh, one more advantage is you can store program and data separately you can store program and data separately so there is no uh, means uh, 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 you cannot find any kind of uh, mismanagement of data and uh, code so uh, in order to overcome that uh, this memory segmentation is being implemented and uh, one more advantage of this memory segmentation is uh, speed also is also one of the factor next uh, uh, feature which is available in 8086 processor compared with uh, its predecessors uh, is instruction pipelining instruction pipelining basically it uh, uh, improves the speed of uh, the execution so because of this instruction pipelining if the processor is executing an instruction the upcoming instruction will be fetched during the same uh, time or simultaneously and that instruction will be stored in the six, uh, six byte instruction queue while the instruction is executed simultaneously the next instruction will be fetched by the processor and then it will be stored in pipeline and the size of pipeline is uh, it is of six bytes now let us come to uh, the signals or pins of 8086 processor uh, as i said uh, the 8086 processor operates in uh, uh, two modes, minimum mode and maximum mode. It operates in two modes, minimum mode and maximum mode. Uh, actually, the pins of 8086 processor, these are classified into three types. One is common pins, minimum mode pins, and maximum mode pins. So there are eight pins. Basically, this 8086 processor is a 40 pin processor. And for this 40 pin uh, processor, there are eight pins which are dedicated for minimum mode and maximum mode. And what these pins are? These pins are from 24 to 31. These are dedicated for minimum mode as well as maximum mode. Uh, beside these, uh, uh, besides these uh, eight uh, pins, the remaining uh, 32 pins, the remaining 32 pins, these pins are called as common pins. So whatever the operations these remaining pins are performing, these are common for both minimum mode and maximum mode. You can observe the signals over here. 24 to 31, hold uh, uh, from hold to INTA. These are all called as minimum mode signals. And from this one to this one, these are all called as maximum mode signals. Let us come to uh, the description about uh, uh, these common mode signals. Uh, first of all, uh, 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 as I said uh, just now, uh, this 8086 processor consists of 20 address bus, 20 uh, bit address bus, and 16 bit uh, data bus. Means uh, 20 address pins are there and 20 data pins are there. In order to avoid the uh, complexity, uh, in order to have not the complexity, in order to decrease the size of the processor, actually data and address signals are time multiplex with each other. So there are uh, uh, 20 pins right from uh, 2 to 16 as well as 39 and uh, 39 to 35. These are the pins uh, over which uh, the processor uh, generates address signals. Uh, pin number 2 to 16 and 39 to uh, 36, uh, 35 to 39. Using these pins, the processor generates the address signals. And these are the pins using which the processor also handles the data signals. Actually, uh, this representation is not correct. So data signals are uh, up to here only. So for the lower order uh, 16, uh, the 16 lower order 16 address lines, these address lines are time multiplexed with the data lines D0 to D15, D0 to D15. In uh, at one point in time, these pins generates address signals, and in other point in time, these pins generates or these pins handle the data signals. So these are nothing but uh, uh, address and data signals time multiplexed with each other. The remaining address signals right from uh, A16 to A19, D is not there. So by mistake, uh, this has been taken, but actually this is A16 to 
A19. So these remaining upper uh, four address signals, these are time multiplexed with the status signals. Yes, indicate status. So what the status signals are? Apart from these four status signals, there are three more uh, status signals, S0 to S2 and S3 to S6. Totally, there are seven status signals. So what these status signals are? Uh, these uh, status signals indicates the status of few additional features of 8086. Uh, for example, uh, what I said is uh, actually one megabyte of memory is uh, uh, organized in uh, segments and these segments are used in the form of uh, in four types. One is code segment, data segment, extra segment and stack segment. So which segment is presently being used? Which segment is presently being used by the processor that is indicated by the combination of S3 and S4? If this combination is 0, 0, it means that 8086 processor is handling the extra segment. If this combination is 1, 1, it means that the 8086 processor is handling the data segment. Next, uh, come to the status signal 5. This is same as that of the interrupt enable flag. It uh, actually, it is being reflected uh, with the interrupt enable flag. If the interrupt enable flag is 1, S5 is equal to 1. If the interrupt enable flag is 0, S5 is equal to zero and uh, this uh, status signal s6 is uh, not basically used in 806 processor next one is uh, next one is bhe bar and s7 as i said uh, just now bhe bar is a signal which is used to handle uh, odd bank of the memory and next one is mn by mx bar as i said uh, just now uh, mn by mx bar is a pin using which you can uh, change the mode of operation of 8086 if this MN by MX bar is equal to uh, 1, then 8086 processor operates in minimum mode. If it is 0, it operates in maximum mode. Now, next common uh, pin or common signal is pin and signal. Uh, actually, these are uh, used interchangeably. If I say about pin, it is nothing but signal. If I say about signal, it is nothing but pin. Okay. The next pin or next signal is RD bar. RD indicates read. So it is an active low signal and it is an output signal. So this uh, signal becomes zero whenever the 8086 processor is performing read operation. So on which it is performing read operation, uh, it may be on the memory or on the input device. If the 8086 processor is performing read operation over uh, uh, any input device, any input device or the memory location, then at that time this signal becomes zero. Now let us come to uh, the next. Uh, common uh, signal or uh, common pin that is test bar. This test bar is uh, basically a signal which works in conjunction with wait instruction. Wait. When wait instruction is uh, uh, executed, the 8086 processor enters into the wait state. Wait state means it uh, enters into the ideal state. So when wait instruction is executed, when wait instruction is executed till this test bar signal becomes zero till this test bar becomes zero the processor will be in the wait state the processor enters into the wait state till the test bar becomes zero next one ready ready is basically a signal uh, uh, ready is basically a signal which indicates uh, uh, the status of uh, the io devices to the processor Whenever the processor is performing any data transfer operation with the IO devices or the memory location, then as an indication of the completion of uh, that data transfer operation, those devices which are uh, connecting with the processor or with which the processor is performing the data transfer operation, those devices have to send the ready signal. Let us suppose the 8086 processor is reading an input device. Whenever the processor reads an, uh, uh, whenever the processor uh, reads an in, uh, input device, it has to get uh, the ready signal from the input device in order to complete the data transfer operation. In order to complete the data transfer operation, the processor has to get the ready signal from the corresponding device. If the ready signal is not being reached, it means that the device with which the 8086 processor is performing the data transfer operation, that device is not, uh, that device is slower and it needs more amount of time. So until the processor doesn't get uh, until the processor uh, uh, gets the ready signal, the processor will not conclude the data transfer operation. This is what the meaning of ready signal is. This is the signal which is basically uh, used to check whether the devices are uh, slower or faster. 
next uh, signal is reset signal uh, reset signal signal or restart signal both are same reset means uh, uh, this is basically an active uh, high signal and it is an input signal and uh, if this uh, reset signal is of duration of four uh, clock pulses then it is considered to be the reset signal so what will happen whenever the reset signal is applied to 8086 whenever uh, the reset signal is applied to 8086 processor the entire system the entire 8086 processor and its associated system is reset so what will happen internal to the 8086 processor when an active high signal of duration four clock pulses is applied to the reset input then all the registers are cleared except one register that is core segment register except core segment register all the registers are cleared and the core segment register is initialized with four f's ff ff h so this is what the uh, application uh, this is what the meaning of reset is it just uh, restarts the system next one is ground there are two ground pins with one vcc so it needs a power supply of 5 uh, volts it needs a power supply of 5 volts and then next one is clock input clock input is of 33% uh, duty cycle it's an asymmetric clock and uh, the 8086 processor consists of two kinds of interrupts uh, inputs one is a non maskable interrupt and next one is normal inter maskable interrupt so interrupt is nothing but a signal which is being generated by the devices in order to uh, get the service of the processor and these interrupts are of two types non maskable and maskable non maskable in the sense which cannot be ignored maskable in the sense which can be ignored so uh, the interrupt signal which is maskable is uh, transferred over to the pin 18 the non maskable interrupts are transferred over to pin 70 so these are the two kinds of interrupts now let us come to the minimum mode signals when mn by mx bar is applied to logic one then uh, it enters into minimum mode so in this minimum mode uh, you can observe the signals uh, in the minimum mode the signals are hold hlda these are the two signals related to dma process and then uh, wr bar m by io bar dt by r bar den bar and ale these are the signals five signals which are related to the data transfer operation data transfer operation these signals are related to the data transfer operation along with the rd bar signal we have seen rd bar signal which is a common signal Along with this RD bar signal, these five signals are uh, indicating the type of data transfer operation. Let us take an example of M by IO bar, WR bar, and RD bar. The combination of these three signals indicates which kind of data transfer operation is happening. Whether it is memory read operation or memory write operation, IO read operation or IO write operation. If this M by IO bar is equal to 1 and RD bar is equal to 0, WR bar is equal to 1 it indicates that it is a memory read operation why because rd bar is equal to 0 wr bar is equal to 1 m by io bar is 1 it is a memory read operation similarly if m by io bar is 0 wr bar is 0 and rd bar is rd bar is equal to 1 it means that this is io write operation okay type of the data transfer operation is indicated by these three signals and what about these ale den bar and dt by r bar Basically, in order to perform any kind of data transfer operation, uh, there are some set of additional uh, uh, additional elements required uh, by the processor. These elements are uh, address latches or latches we can say and the uh, bidirectional uh, buffers or bidirectional uh, or transceivers we can say. What I said uh, just now is uh, there are uh, 16 pins or there are uh, address signals which are time multiplex with the data signals as well as the status signals so uh, let us uh, just uh, uh, don't consider uh, uh, the address signals which are uh, time multiplex with the status signals let us consider uh, the address signals which are time multiplex with the data signals what those signals are a0 to a15 which are time multiplex with d0 to d15 so uh, same pins are generating the address and the same pins are used to handle the data signals so what will happen here is at one point in time of the data transfer activity the processor generates address and in other point in time uh, of the data transfer activity the processor use the same pins for the transfer of data signals okay so 
uh, initially the address is being generated when the address is generated that address need to be held uh, in the uh, need to be held in the address bus in order to do so uh, the elements uh, uh, which are being used are latches so what this latches will do is latches will uh, hold the address signals from the processor and place those address signals over the address bus so in order to hold that in order to handle uh, the latches this ale signal is used ale is nothing but address latch enable this address latch enable signal becomes active high becomes active high and also becomes active low it's nothing but a pulse this ale pulse is generated in, uh, during the first part of the bus cycle at which the address signals are generated by the processor and these address signals are collected by the latch and these address signals will be placed over the address bus and in the remaining part of the bus cycle the processor uses the same pins to transfer the data and uh, there is a direction of transfer of data transmit and receive uh, read the data write the data means the data which transfers towards the processor which is called as read and the data which is being transferred from the processor which is called as write so in order to handle the data signals in order to handle the data signals with the processor there is one more element which is connected with the processor and that element is called as bidirectional buffer why is why is it called as bidirectional buffer why because these buffers transfer the data in both the directions so in order to handle uh, both the uh, buffer uh, in order to handle the buffers these two signals are used den bar den bar means data enable dt by r bar means data transmit or receive so these are the two signals which handles the bidirectional buffers and these bidirectional buffers are also called as uh, transceivers and next one is inta bar as i said just now uh, interrupt signal whenever the interrupt signal is reached then as an acknowledgement to the uh, interrupting device the processor generates the interrupt acknowledgement signals these are not signals these are pulses and the processor generates two active low interrupt acknowledgement signals to the interrupting device next Uh, as i said uh, just now hold and hld these are the two signals which are used for the uh, dma process whenever the uh, bus master bus requesting master needs the hold of uh, the system bus it sends a request signal which is called as hold signal this signal is being sent by the requesting master to the processor after getting the request signal the 8086 processor uh, checks some conditions and then uh, if it is possible to give the system bus to that uh, requesting master as an acknowledgement it will generate another signal which is called as hold acknowledgement to the requesting master so after getting the uh, hlda signal the bus requesting master gets the hold of uh, the system bus and then uses that system bus for the data transfer activity now let us come to the maximum mode uh, signals uh, as i said uh, maximum mode uh, 8086 processor enters into the maximum mode whenever mn by mx bar is applied to logic 0 and uh, what is maximum mode it is a mode in which 8086 processor operates in multi processor uh, mode multi processor mode means along with 8086 processor other processors are also available mostly they are co processors co math processors we can say so these processors are also available with 8086 processor now uh, uh, let us come to the first set of uh, maximum mode signals the first set of maximum mode signals are status signals these are ranging from s0 to s2 and uh, actually these status signals indicates these kind of operations as i said in the previous uh, slide that uh, in order to perform the data transfer activity we need to have few signals what do signals are early signal dn bar signal dt by r bar signal m by io bar signal wr bar signal these are all the signals which are required to indicate the type of data transfer activity but these signals we cannot observe uh, in the maximum mode and uh, uh, these operations are indicated by the uh, signals s0 to s2 uh, you can see the combinations over here each and every combination indicates a type of operation so this combination indicates uh, interrupt acknowledgement this combination indicates read io this combination indicates write io like that uh, uh, the type of operations are being uh, indicated by the status signals next one is uh, qs uh, not and qs1 uh, these are the two signals uh, which indicates uh, what is happening over the instruction queue uh, 
uh, instruction pipelining is a uh, main concept in 8086 which depends upon a special element which is called a six byte instruction queue so the instruction which is being fetched will be stored in instruction queue first and then from the instruction queue byte by byte that instruction will be transferred to the processor for the execution so what is happening to the instruction queue that is indicated by the uh, queue status so if this combination is 0 0 it means that nothing is happening over the instruction queue if this combination is 0 1 then first byte of the op code is being transferred from the instruction stream byte queue. If the combination is 1, 0, it means that queue is empty. If the combination is 1 and 1, it means that the subse uh, subsequent uh, bytes are being transferred to the uh, other part of the 8086 processor. Now let us come to RQ bar and uh, JT naught bar. Uh, uh, in the minimum mode, there is uh, a hold signal and HLDA signal which are for uh, the DMA process. Similarly, in maximum mode, uh, there are two sets of hold and HLDA. There are two sets of hold and HLDA. Uh, hold in the maximum mode is called as RQ bar request and HLDA uh, is called as GT. GT means grant and there are two sets of hold and HLDA. Uh, and uh, the same pin can uh, get the hold signal, can generate the HLDA signal and HLDA signals, bus grant and bus re request signals. And next one is lock bar. Lock bar signal is an active low signal and uh, this lock bar signal is uh, an output signal which is active low. So what this uh, lock bar signal is, basically this uh, lock bar signal works in conjunction with an instruction prefix which is called as lock, instruction prefix not instruction. Uh, if you find an instruction which consists of an instruction prefix lock, it means that that instruction, uh, because of that instruction, the 8086 processor locks the system bus and it uh, will not give the system bus to any requesting master. Up to what time? Till the next instruction. Till the second instruction is executed, next instruction is executed, the 8086 processor locks the system bus. If an instruction consists of lock instruction prefix, then because of that instruction, the 8086 processor locks the system bus till the next instruction is completed. As an indication to that, this lock bar signal becomes logic zero. If this lock bar signal is logic zero, it means that the 8086 processor has locked the system bus. It will not give the system bus to any requesting master. This is what the meaning of lock bar is. Now let us come to the architecture of 8086 processor. This 8086 processor consists of two functional units. First one is called as BIU, which is called as bus interface unit. And second one is called as EU. EU means execution unit. So what were these two units, sir? Uh, uh, I just uh, said about uh, the type of operation that is happening uh, uh, to perform any kind of activity. Whenever we write a program to perform any kind of activity, that program will be stored in the memory. So to execute that program, the uh, program is to be fetched instruction by instruction. In order to perform the fetching of the instructions from the memory, this part is utilized. And after fetching the instructions, the execution happens in this part. The execution happens in this part. This part is responsible to perform the fetching of instructions as well as data. And this part is responsible to perform the execution of the instructions according to the data values that are being accessed. As I said, the bus interface unit, it is responsible to fetch the instructions as well as data and execution unit executes the instructions. Now let us come to uh, 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 the discussion about each and every part of the architecture. So you can observe this element. You can observe this summation. This summation indicates address translation. So what for this address translation is? See here. Uh, 8086 processor make use of uh, memory segmentation. In this memory segmentation, uh, in this memory segmentation, uh, the memory is divided into segments. And uh, because of this segmentation, uh, the 8086 processor can access the memory locations using 16-bit addresses. Uh, basically, there are uh, two types of addresses which are used by uh, the 8086 processor to access the required memory location. So what those addresses are? One of the 16-bit address is called as uh, segment address. And another 16-bit address is called as uh, offset address. 
so i said uh, just now that uh, uh, according to the memory segmentation 8086 processor uses the segments in the form of four segments 8086 processor uses the segments in the form uh, in four uh, four forms one is core segment data segment stack segment extra segment core segment uh, consists of the code or program data segment consists of data stack segment consists of some set of stack values and extra segment is the uh, another version of data segment it also stores the data values so these are the registers which stores the segment addresses and uh, these are the registers which uh, associated with uh, uh, with their pairs to hold the uh, uh, offset signals uh, offset address so the segment address and offset address these are being uh, uh, these are being processed here these are being processed here and then these 16 bit addresses are converted into 20 bit address this is called as address conversion mechanism segment address will be collected from the segment registers and offset address will be collected from uh, the registers and then the 20 bit address will be converted in order to access a particular memory location so these registers holds the segment addresses and these registers holds the offset address along with ip uh, for this uh, core segment register the pair is instruction pointer and for this data segment register its pair is uh, uh, si and for the stack segment register the pair register is sp and for the extra segment register the pair is da so these four registers consist of segment addresses this register these two registers and this register these four registers stores the corresponding offset values now uh, uh, just now i discussed about code segment which consists of uh, code and uh, to handle uh, to convey the information about the address of the segment or to store the address of the segment uh, cs register is used and it is associated with ip register cs register holds the segment address ip register holds the offset address data segment register data segment register holds the segment address of the data segment and its uh, associated uh, uh, register is si to hold the offset address sometimes you can use da also you can use bx also it is not compulsory that you have to use si but uh, normally si is the pair of ds register stack segment register uh, on the stack we can perform push and uh, pop activities uh, you know very well about push and pop and to hold the present top of the stack stack pointer is used and this stack pointer is the pair of stack segment next extra segment extra segment uh, actually basically the need of extra segment is whenever we are performing any kind of operation uh, over the string then that string is basically uh, taken in extra segment also if you are tra uh, transferring the data from one string to other uh, another string one of the string is to be taken in uh, course uh, uh, data segment another st segment is uh, another string is to be taken in extra segment so its pair uh, register is di so esdi it forms 20 bit physical address next instruction pointer it is nothing but uh, program counter and this is instruction stream byte to whose length is of uh, 6 bytes uh, whenever the pro uh, whenever the processor is executing an instruction next instruction will be fetched and stored here and uh, decode it consists of decode uh, which translates the instructions and this is an alu and these are the general purpose registers ax bx cx and dx these are the 16 bit general purpose registers and these 16 bit general purpose registers can also be used as 8 bit registers like al ah bl bh cl ch dl and dh now let us come to the function of each and every register Accumulator is basically as its name implies there are some instructions wherein the result will be stored automatically in ax let us take an example of multiplication and division in multiplication and division the result will be stored automatically in ax so this ax can also be used as al and ah among these two registers al is called as 8 bit accumulator bx bx is called as base register so this is also used to carry the data values and why this is called as base register why because uh, this register also holds the address of the data segment and there is one more application of base segment uh, base register but uh, you just remember that this base register bx can also be used to hold the offset address of data segment 
to, uh, to access the data values. Next, uh, counter register CX. This is a normal uh, general purpose register, but the special application of uh, the C CX register is this CX register in some of the registers is in some of the instructions. This register is being used as uh, a counter register. Automatically, there are some registers which uses this register as counter register. Uh, you can take an example of uh, string manipulation instructions. You can take an example of loop instruction. Loop instruction performs uh, uh, the loop activity depends upon the uh, content of CX register. Shift uh, rotate instructions. The shift and rotate instructions stores the uh, value in CX register, which indicates the number of shifts or rotate operations to be done. So this CX is nothing but counter register. Let us come to the data register. The data register is a normal, uh, it's a general purpose register. But apart from its general purpose operation, this uh, data register DX can also be used to hold the address of the ports. Whenever the 8086 processor is, uh, uh, when the processor is, uh, when the 8086 processor is interfacing with uh, IO devices, the processor will make use of the address of the IO devices. But basically, IO devices won't have the addresses. The ports which are connected uh, uh, with the IO devices, those ports consist of addresses. And these addresses are stored in the DX register. So DX register is the only register in 806 processor which is allowed to carry the port addresses for the IO interfacing operation. Stack pointer and base pointer. Stack pointer is a register which is used to hold the present top of the stack, address of the present top of the stack. And stack operates in last in, first out manner. And base pointer. Base pointer operation is also same as, same as a stack pointer, but uh, we cannot replace base pointer uh, with a stack pointer. Basically, base pointer is a register which takes the copy of the stack pointer. And what for uh, this base pointer is, this base pointer can also be used to access the required content uh, from the stack memory. In order to access the required content from the stack memory, we will make use of the base pointer register. So uh, it will just take a copy of stack pointer and then uh, adding some value with that, it will access the required content from the stack. But we cannot replace stack pointer with base pointer. Its application is totally different. Its application is totally different. Using the stack pointer, you can access uh, uh, only the uh, values which are uh, uh, which are being pushed one by one serially. But using the base pointer, you can access the required value. Source index and destination index. Source index register uh, uh, holds the offset address of the uh, data segment. Destination index register holds the offset address of uh, extra segment. This can also be used for data signature. Next, uh, let us come to the flag register. As I said, uh, flag register is of 16 bits and it consists of nine active flags, CF, PF, AF, ZF, uh, and all these flags. So these nine active flags are classified into two parts. Uh, one is called as condition port flags and next one is called as uh, uh, machine control flags. So there are uh, six condition port flags. Condition port flags indicates uh, uh, condition port. Condition port means uh, it indicates the status of the result that is being generated by the uh, arithmetic and logical unit. So what does what those condition port flags are? Overflow flag, sign flag, zero flag, auxiliary carry flag, parity flag, and carry flag. These are the six uh, condition uh, code flags and uh, uh, the three flags direction flag interrupt enable flag and trap flag these are called as machine control flags uh, you know very well about these flags i have no need to discuss about uh, these flags carry flag parity flag auxiliary carry flag zero flag sign flag and uh, trap flag uh, let us come to trap flag uh, whenever this trap flag is one, the processor enters into single step execution mode. Single step execution mode means you can execute the program instruction by instruction. That is called as single step execution mode. And uh, next one is interrupt enable flag. Whenever the 8086 processor gets an interrupt over INTR pin, 
then the 8086 processor checks the IF flag. If this IF flag is uh, 1, then the interrupt which is available over INTR pin, which is maskable, that inter interrupt will be accepted. If this uh, flag is 0, the interrupt which is available over INTR pin will be rejected. It will be ignored. Next, direction flag. It is the flag uh, uh, which is basically used to manipulate the string. If the direction flag is 0, the string will be operated in auto incrementing mode. And if the direction flag is 1, the string will be operated in auto decrementing mode. Overflow flag. Uh, basically, this overflow occurs whenever we perform operations over uh, sign numbers. If the magnitude part of the result extends into the uh, sign bit, if the magnitude part of the result enters into the sign bit, then that is considered to be the overflow and that is considered as an error. Now, this is about uh, the registers. What is the size of these registers, all these things. And this is what I explained just now. Let us come to the addressing modes. Addressing modes. What is the meaning of an addressing mode? Addressing mode means addressing means locating. Mode means method. Addressing mode means it is the way of locating the data values. In order to perform any kind of activities, the data values need to be accessed. In order to access the data values, the processor need to locate those data values, where the data values are, whether the data values are in register, whether the data values are in the memory locations, or the data values are taken directly. So that method of locating the data values in order to perform any kind of activity or in order to perform or in order to execute an instruction, the method uh, is called as addressing mode. It's a way of locating the data value. So the data value can be taken directly. The data value can be available in the register. The data value can be available in the memory location. According to that, uh, the addressing mode is basically divided into three parts. One is register addressing mode. Next one is immediate addressing mode. And the remaining, uh, remaining seven addressing modes, these are coming under uh, the memory addressing mode. Register addressing mode, immediate addressing mode, memory addressing mode. In this memory addressing mode, these are all the variants, classifications. Next. Register addressing mode and immediate addressing mode. In this register addressing mode, register and immediate addressing mode, the data value is taken directly or they are available in the register, as I said. And uh, for these addressing modes, the data value is available in the memory. Now let us come to the register addressing mode. In this register addressing mode, the data values are being held by the registers. Move CL comma DH. The data value in DH is being transferred to CL register. Immediate addressing mode. You are taking data values directly. You are taking data data values directly. So these operands operands are taken directly, and these data values are transferred to the registers. Now, let us come to the direct addressing mode. In this uh, direct addressing mode, the address is taken directly. Now, if a value is taken within a bracket, this value is not the data value. This is the memory address where from the data value is collected. And that data value will be transferred to BX. This is the address uh, wherein the data value is available. And that data value is transferred to BL register. One more point that we need to remember is what kind of address this is. Is it the segment address or is it the offset address? If it is the segment address, which segment it is? And if it is the offset address, which uh, which segments offset offset address it is? Basically, these are the addresses which are called to be the offset addresses of uh, the data segment. The values that you are being taken uh, within the brackets, these are the offset addresses of data segment. Next. Uh, what we have seen is uh, in order to access the data value which is available in the memory, we are taking the addresses. And using the address, we are directly accessing the data value from those locations. Uh, but always we cannot make use of this kind of operation to access the data values directly from the locations by taking the address directly. Why? Because uh, uh, within a program, we need to access 100, number, 100 data values and we have to perform operations over the 100 data values separately then uh, we cannot use uh, this kind of uh, uh, format, this kind of addressing mode. So that's why what uh, we make, uh, uh, what actually we do is, we make use of uh, 
one more kind of uh, memory addressing mode which is called as register indirect addressing mode in this register indirect addressing mode the addresses are taken in registers and using those registers the data values will be accessed from the memory locations from the data segment offset addresses or from the data segment locations register indirect addressing mode register indirect addressing mode in the sense the register consists of address and from that address the data will be accessed and all these addressing modes right from 4 to 9 these are all register indirect addressing modes you can see over here bx is placed in bracket means whatever the value that is available in bx that value is the address and from that address the data will be collected and it will be placed in cx register next based addressing mode so i am just uh, just uh, i club uh, relative addressing mode with, with all these three addressing modes see here based addressing mode means if base register is used to carry the offset address base register in the sense bx and bp if you are using bx and bp to carry the offset address then uh, uh, that kind of addressing mode is called as based addressing mode if you add further a value to that bx register then this is called as relative uh, suppose bx consists of 4000 and this value is not there uh, the bracket is closed over here move ax comma bracket bx this value is not there let us suppose this value is not there it means that uh, the data from the location 4000 is being accessed through the bx register and that, that will be transferred to ax register this is called as based addressing mode if you add further a value to that uh, bx register then that becomes a relative based addressing mode means 4000 will be added with 8 4008 the data will be collected from 4008 and it will be transferred to ax register next index addressing mode in this index addressing mode to carry the Uh, offset address we make use of index registers and what the index registers are there are two index registers one is si other one is di these are the two registers which holds the offset addresses and i have uh, uh, taken relative also in this example uh, if you take bracket up to si this is called as index addressing mode and if you further add some value to the si this becomes the relative index addressing mode similarly based index addressing mode in this based index addressing mode uh, the offset address is obtained by adding the content of bx and si bs register index register the offset address of uh, the location where the data value is available that address is obtained by adding the content of bx and si if further you add some value to these two registers then it becomes a relative based index addressing mode relative based index next one is implicit addressing implicit addressing means uh, these are the uh, addressing modes wherein uh, wherein uh, you cannot find any kind of operand that is called as implicit addressing uh, operand is not available but implicit uh, operand is there clc clc means clear the carry flag clear the carry flag it is performing the operation over the carry flag but carry flag is not taken as an operand but internally this uh, instruction is performing operation over the carry flag that's why this is called as implicit addressing mode now let us come to the instruction set it uh, supports 8086 processor supports six kinds of uh, instructions data transfer arithmetic logical string manipulation process control and control transfer instructions data transfer instructions are used to transfer the data arithmetic instructions are used to perform arithmetic operations logical instructions are used to perform logical operations string manipulation instructions are used to perform uh, uh, perform operations over the string and process control uh, instructions are used to handle the processor to control the processor so control transfer instructions these are the instructions which are also called as branching instructions now uh, in the instructions uh, uh, what are be the instruction is there are two parts mostly the instruction consists of two parts one is opcode next one is operands 
upcode indicates the type of operation operands indicates the data values over which the operation is happening operation is being performed and uh, there are two kinds of operands one is called as source operand next one is called as destination operand the first operation that is available with the instruction is called as destination and the next uh, operand which is available with the instruction is called as source operand and these operands may be uh, registers may be memory locations or may be data values directly may be registers may be uh, location addresses or may be uh, the direct data values if it is an address as an operand that address may be taken directly or it may be taken in any register and the registers can be 8 bit registers or 16 bit registers next uh, let us come to the data transfer instructions move instruction to transfer the data in between uh, two registers or data value into a register or data value uh, uh, into memory location data into register data into memory memory to register register to memory register to register these kind of operations are uh, possible uh, by using move instruction but one more uh, point that we need to remember is the move instruction cannot be used to transfer the data in between two memory locations it is not valid in 8086 process in 8086 processor it is invalid that you are transferring the data directly from one register one location to another location it is not possible next another instruction is xchg xchg indicates exchange this instruction exchanges the content of two registers or exchanges the content of location and the register memory location and the register next push and pop you know very well about push and pop push instruction is used to transfer a word into the stack location and pop instruction is used to pop off the data value from the stack location there are some operations which are happening for the push operation the stack pointer is decremented by 2 and then the word is being transferred to the uh, stack locations for the pop operation uh, actually the pop off operation happens first first of all a word will be transferred from the stack into the register or the memory location and then the stack pointer is um, incremented by 2 push instruction pre decrements the stack pointer pop instruction post increments the stack pointer by 2 next in and out instructions these are the two instructions which are used to access the input and output devices in instruction is used to access the input device out instruction is used to access the output device uh, actually this in and out instructions consists of only two kinds of operands one is al next one is dx AL is accumulator. DX is the register which holds the port address. Next, arithmetic instructions. These are the arithmetic instructions. Add two registers. Content of two registers. Store the resulting destination. This is called as destination register or destination operand. This is called as source operand. The addition happens over uh, the content of both of these registers, and the result will be stored in destination operand. this is normal addition this is addition with carry normal addition addition with carry similarly sub instruction sbb to perform the subtraction operation over the two given values and these values may be in the register or may be in the memory location sometimes there may be uh, a necessity to subtract the two values along with the borrow that has been taken in the previous operation sbb increment or decrement the content of registers or the memory location multiplication and division you know very well about uh, multiplication and division you can perform multiplication uh, operation over the two similar values two same kind of data values or same size data values an 8 bit can be multiplied with 8 bit if you are doing such kind of operation one of the 8 bit value is to be taken in al other value can be taken in memory location it can be taken in register or in the memory location when you perform 8 bit uh, and 8 bit the result is of 16 bit it will be automatically stored in ax for the word type of multiplication one of the word value is taken in ax other value is taken in memory location or the register and when you multiply both the word values the result is as long as 32 and that result will be stored automatically in ax and dx ax consists of 16 bit uh, uh, lower 16 bit part of the result and dx consists of upper 16 bit part of the register similarly actually this mul instruction is used to perform uh, the multiplication operation over the 
unsigned data values. In order to perform the operation over the signed data value, SIML instruction is used. Similarly, DIV instruction. DIV instruction is used to perform the division operation. And uh, using the DIV instruction, you can perform uh, the division over 16 bit by 8 bit or 32 bit by 16 bit. You can divide 16 bit value by 8 bit values, 32 bit value by 16 bit value. This is uh, uh, the 16 bit value uh, is to be taken in uh, uh, AX register and 8 bit value can be taken in any one of the register. When you divide 16 bit by 8 bit, then you will get 8 bit quotient and 8 bit remainder. This 8 bit quotient will be stored in AL and 8 bit remainder will be stored in AH register. Similarly, when you are dividing 32 bit by 16 bit, the 32 bit uh, uh, value will be taken in AX and DX and 16 bit uh, divisor will be taken in any one of the register or the memory location. When you perform the division operation, uh, the quotient will be of 16 bit, remainder will be of 30, uh, 16 bits and these two 16 bit values will be stored in AX and DX respectively. Similarly, uh, uh, IDIV instruction. This IDIV instruction can be used to perform division over the uh, signed data values. DIV is used for unsigned data values. Next is comparison. This comparison instruction is used to compare two data values and these data values are available in registers or register and memory location or memory and register. Sometimes register or memory location with the data value directly. And uh, this comparison operation performs the subtraction operation. But uh, the difference between this subtraction and comparison is subtraction instruction stores the result, but the comparison instruction will not store the result in destination operand. But then what for this comparison operation is this comparison operation is to affect the flags of the flag register. What uh, flags are affected? The flags which are affected are carry flag, zero flag and sign flag. These are affected. You can observe over here. Next, in the arithmetic, there are few more instructions. I am explaining only few. Uh, AAA. This is uh, ASCII adjust after addition. When you add two ASCII values, the result will not be the legal ASCII result. It will be unpacked BCD result. In order to convert the unpacked BCD into actual B, uh, ASCII result, this uh, uh, AAA instruction is used. Similarly, AAS. When you subtract one ASCII value from another ASCII value, the result will not be ASCII. It will be unpacked BCD value. Unpacked BCD value means 0, 4, 0, 5, 0, 4, 0, 5. These are all called as unpacked BCD. So whenever you perform subtraction operation over the ASCII values, the result is unpacked BCD result. That unpacked BCD result uh, will be converted into ASCII by using this AS instruction. There are some rules to convert that. Uh, you can go through the notes for that. There is one more instruction which is called as CBW. Convert uh, a signed byte into a board. A signed byte will be converted into a signed board, uh, board by using the CBW instruction. Similarly, one more instruction is there which is called as CWD. The CWD instruction converts signed word into signed uh, double word. Next, DA, it is same as that of AA instruction. DA instruction is nothing but decimal adjust after BCD addition. Whenever you add two BCD numbers, two decimal numbers, numbers, the result will not be decimal. The result will be in the form of hexadecimal. In order to convert that uh, hexadecimal result into a decimal result, you need to make use of DA instruction. Similarly, DAS, after getting a hexadecimal result, uh, after subtracting two BCD values that uh, will be converted into uh, decimal using this DA, DAS. Next, uh, logical instructions. Uh, these are the logical instructions. You know very well AND operation or XOR test. Test is similar to AND, but the difference between test and AND is AND performs a AND operation, stores the result. But test performs AND operation, it will not, test, uh, it will not store the result will not store the result. It only performs AND operation. And what for this instruction is, this is just to change the status of the flags. Similarly, uh, shift instructions, rotate instructions. Uh, 
shift towards right, shift towards left, or uh, rotate towards right, rotate towards left. In these uh, shift towards right and shift towards left, there are two uh, types of rotate instructions. Shift towards right or left without carry, shift towards right or left with carry. And in shift instructions also, there are two uh, types. One is logical shift and another one is arithmetic shift. In the logical uh, logical and arithmetic shift towards left, shift towards left, both instructions are same. But uh, the uh, arithmetic and logical shift towards right, there is small difference. What the difference is? Uh, in this uh, shift towards right, in logical, uh, the MSB bit will be copied in the vacant position. In arithmetic, the MSB bit will be copied in the vacant position, and in logical, zero will be inserted. This is about shift and rotate. Next, uh, string manipulation instructions. In this uh, string manipulation instructions, uh, there are five kinds. Uh, one is uh, uh, instruction to uh, uh, to uh, move the string from one set of locations to another set of locations. Move move instruction that is move sb or move sw and uh, there is an instruction which is used to compare the strings cmp sp or cmp sw load the instruction scan the uh, load the string scan the string and uh, uh, store the string these are the five types of instructions and uh, what is basically a string string is nothing but sequence of data values available in the memory locations and we can perform these kind of operations over the string and these are the instructions which are associated with some instruction prefixes. And what these prefixes are? REP, repeat, REP, repeat if equal, REP, any, repeat if not equal. In order to perform the operations uh, over the strings, first of all, we have to know about what kind of strings are there. There are two kinds of strings. One is string of bytes, another one is string of words. String of bytes and string of words. And in order to perform uh, any kind of operation over the string, first of all, we need to uh we need to set uh, we need to set the value in the uh, direction flag as i said uh, in the flag register in the slide of flag register direction flag is such a flag uh, which is used to process the string if the direction flag is zero if the direction flag is zero the string is operated in auto incrementing mode and in this mode uh, the SI and DA registers, these are incremented automatically by 1 for a string of bytes and by 2 for a string of words. If the direction flag is 1, the string is operated in auto decrementing mode and in this mode, uh, the index registers SI and DI, these are decremented by 1 for byte and 2 for string of words. So, uh, we know about uh, these instructions move sp cmp sp scan sp load sp sto sp we just to go through the notes and uh, next one is process control instruction these are the instructions which uh, controls the processor set the carry flag clear the carry flag compare the carry flag set the direction flag clear the direction flag uh, set the interrupt enable flag clear the interrupt enable flag no operation halt wait escape lock about this actually lock is not an instruction it is an instruction prefix control transfer instruction these instructions are also called as uh, branching instructions and there are two types of control transfer instructions one is uh, conditional control transfer instructions other one is unconditional control transfer instructions so whatever the instructions that we have seen uh, uh, just now before this set all those instructions are called as uh, uh, sequential control flow instructions so what is the meaning of sequential control flow instructions? These are the instructions uh, which transfers the execution control of the processor to the next instruction. Execution control of the processor to the next instruction after it is executed. Now control transfer instructions, these are the instructions which transfers the execution control to some other instruction. That's why these are called as control transfer. So these are uncondo unconditional uh, transfer instructions without any condition. These instructions will transfer the execution control to some other uh, location. Uh, for the conditional uh, control transfer instructions, uh, the 8086 processor depends upon the flags. 
uh, these are a zero flag and all these things uh, you know very well about all these things you can go through the nodes and assembler directive so what is an assembler directive assembler directive basically uh, as they uh, as uh, its name implies assembler directive is uh, such a uh, such an element uh, uh, in uh, the 8086 processor or in a processor or uh, software part of the processor uh, which directs the assembler about uh, the label. Uh, normally, programs consist of addresses. Programs consist of some data values. If you want to assign some labels to the addresses or the data values, uh, uh, we can make use of uh, the labels. And we can assign the labels by using the assembler directives. And whenever the uh, assembler finds a label in the program, uh, that label is considered to be an address or the data value uh, according to the initialization of that label. You can see uh, all these things here. DB, define by, define word, segment, and all these things are the assembler directives. So you can go through notes, and uh, we have discussed all these things in the class. Uh, unit 3, uh, we'll discuss this unit 3 in the next class uh, because uh, now this uh, now time is 12.30. Uh, so we'll discuss unit 3 in the next class. Uh, uh, shall we conclude, ma'am? Oh, okay, sir. Okay. Uh, Thankful uh, to the students uh, for attending this class. And tomorrow also I have another class. Uh, in that class, I will discuss unit 3, 4, and 5. Okay, thank you for uh, attending this class.